We're getting ready to do a brake flush on this 2015 pickup truck. So this is the Brakemate Junior flush machine. So right now, you get, in order to use the machine, you got to hook it up to a 12 volt battery, which I just have a 12 volt battery sitting over here on the floor. And then we'll go up and hook up to the master cylinder so that you can see the adapter and see how to hook up to the master cylinder. And now that we're up here on top to hook to the master cylinder, usually what I do, there is a laminated sheet that comes with every machine that kind of gives you what adapter fits what vehicle. Usually myself, I just take the cap off, see what cap it is, if it's a thread on cap or if it's a pin cap or whatever throat size, and I just take it over to the kit and mock up what I need for the adapter. It saves a little bit of time, but uh, there is a sheet that comes with it that kind of tells you what fits what. So this is a thread-on style cap. The seal's right here in the bottom of the cap that we're gonna put on. So we'll screw this onto the master cylinder. And it is a swivel elbow that's on the top of this. So wherever you tighten it up at, you're not cumbersome to get into the air box or anything like that. You can swivel this thing wherever you need for it to be. So what we'll do is we'll hook up our service line, which this yellow service line runs down and hooks up to the brake machine. So we'll hook this onto our master cylinder now. We'll go ahead and open up our ball valve on the end of the hose so that we can get flow. And now we'll go back down to the brake machine, turn the brake machine on, pressurize the master cylinder with about uh, 10 to 12 PSI, verify that we don't have a leak here, and then we'll start our flush. So like I said, hook to 12 volt, which you can operate off the battery off the vehicle, but since I've already got this up in the air, I have it a secondary battery over here, 12 volt battery that we're hooked to here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna power the machine up. The regulator, I always suggest moving the regulator back down to the zero point to where if you're doing a hybrid, somebody hooks up to a, a vehicle and you've been doing a hybrid and you got 45, 50 PSI on here, if you hook up to a normal vehicle with that much pressure, you could blow the seals out of the master cylinder. Please keep that in mind. So I always, whenever I get done doing a brake service, I always roll the regulator down to the zero point. Now, in order to change this, somebody might lock your regulator knob down. You can't turn it here if you do that. So you just gotta pick up on the regulator knob a little bit and you can unlock it. And then just clockwise dial your pressure up. The pump will quiet down in just a minute. The fluid is starved from the pump. So I've got this set on 12 PSI right now. So I know I have 12 PSI at the master cylinder now. So I'm just gonna shut this off real quick. So basically what we're doing here right now is we're just making sure our adapter is not leaking, which I've tightened it down on there pretty snug. Now some of your adapters have a wing nut in the top of them. And the wing nut or a thumb screw in the top of them, what happens is they might have just like three pin connectors on it and you'll have to set your pin connectors down on the master cylinder and turn it to the end of the locks on your pin connectors and then use your thumb screw to take the adapter out into the throat of the master cylinder. So right now we have no leaks here, so we're ready to go back down to the machine. And this is what I'm talking about, about the thumb screw and the pin locks. Some people will just set the pin locks down on the master cylinder and not turn them into the locks on the master cylinder cap. If they do that and you tighten up your thumb screw to move the O-ring out into the throat of your master cylinder, if you don't have these turned into the locks on the master cylinder, it will blow this cap up off the master cylinder. So please make sure that you, turn, you set your pins down on your master cylinder and turn it to the locks and then tighten up your, your thumb nut here to expand your o-ring into the throat of the master cylinder to seal the master cylinder. So now we're going to turn this back on and start our flush. So basically with a rear wheel drive vehicle you always want to start with the furthest away from the master cylinder. So we're going to turn this back on and then we're going to go to the passenger side rear wheel and continue our flush. So basically what you do here is you got your bleeder valve here. Now you just got to be kind of careful because sometimes your bleeder valves will be rusted. I sprayed penetrating oil on this earlier and I double checked to make sure that the bleeder is going to break loose. So you have a bleeder boot here that looks like it has an awful small hole in it, but this bleeder boot is capable of doing wheel cylinders and brake calipers. Your brake caliper bleeder valve will always have a larger head than your wheel cylinders, but this will expand out and go right onto this bleeder on this caliper, no trouble whatsoever. 
So I've got a 11 millimeter wrench on here. So all you do now is just crack your bleeder open. And as you can see, we've got brake fluid starting to move through our line and we're bleeding the brake. It takes a little while to fill this 5 16 tube because you only have a, a 3 16 brake line mo moving back here. So you got very small amount of fluid that's actually hitting this back wheel. But we are dropping into the bottle. We can start going up the bottle. Usually what I'll do is I'll let the first wheel bleed what's in the master cylinder out through the first wheel. That way you know you got a good clean flush going on and everything like that. You're seeing that you would think is air here when all it is is a hydraulic void. It just can't fill the tube all the way. So don't let this alarm you too much as far as what's going on there right now. So, so I will let this run up and, and bleed through. I'll let this run up about, oh, there's, mark, there's increments on the bottle. So I'll usually let it run up into the first or second increment on the first wheel doing the flush to where I can make sure I get all the dirty fluid out of the master cylinder reservoir back through this first wheel. And then the rest of the bleeders won't take nearly as much time. But we offer this clear tube like this so you can actually watch the color of your brake fluid change over from pretty black burnt brake fluid to uh, uh, it should be a little bit of a clear amber look. This is dot three that I'm putting through here. Some of your dot four brake fluid is green. So it's a little bit harder to tell if you're trying to work by color. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up there and show you basically how to disconnect once you are hooked up the vehicle doing your flush. So I'm going to close this bleeder valve off here. So I'll close this down. So basically what's going to happen here now, we're going to disconnect the machine from the vehicle. So you shut your pressure off, your pump off here. Don't mess with anything right here. The reason why we have this gauge where it keeps pressure on the system is so if you have a bleeder that's not quite seated and you're losing pressure off your gauge here, you know you got a leaky bleeder. So this is just kind of a safety feature right here as far as to make sure that you got everything closed back down. But before you disconnect your hoses at the master cylinder, always make sure that you push your pressure relief valve here. If you don't push your pressure relief valve and disconnect at the master cylinder up there, you'll have pressure in the master cylinder and it'll blow brake fluid back at you. So always make sure before you just quick disconnect, bleed it down to where you have no pressure on it and then go back up and disconnect your bleeder. On the new fluid tank, there is a flapper valve in the new fluid tank so if you get down to a certain point and that the tank won't be empty, but you get down to a certain point, it will shut the machine down because we don't want it to run completely out of fluid because then you'll be introducing air into the brake system and you don't want that to happen whatsoever. But if it gets down low enough, the machine's light on the front will start flashing at you and there's also an audible beep with the machine to let you know that you're low on brake fluid and the machine is turned off. The, ta the, the tank holds 64 fluid ounces and you have a center gauge here that you can kind of see what's going on as far as how much fluid you have in the tank. So now when you get ready to disconnect here, but just make sure you close your ball valve and we have no more pressure on the master cylinder. So when we disconnect the hose, we won't have brake fluid shooting back out the master cylinder. So then all you do is just take your adapter off that you have put on there. And wherever you started out, with your master cylinder, wherever you start out with fluid level in your master cylinder, it's going to be in the same place because this is a closed caption hole. And if you're low on brake fluid, you're going to be low on brake fluid when you get finished and you'll have to top it off if you want to do that. Most people won't top it off due to the fact that this, you can kind of tell where of your brake pads and it kind of gives you a little heads up when you need to need to do a brake service. But then you just put your cap back on and then your brake flush is done.